Hi, this is Luke Covey, Editorial Director of New Tech Press, and I'm here at Semicon West with, with Nigel Farrar, uh, Vice President of Marketing and Lithography Technology for Symer. Uh, so, what's Symer doing here at uh, Semicon West? Hi, well, um, uh, we had two uh, press announcements this week, uh, one regarding our Smart Pulse product and one regarding our Focus Drilling product. Both of them uh, are used to enhance process uh, yield and process uh, latitude in the DPV space. Um, we're the largest supplier of DPV light sources and as process technology shrinks and CD control gets more uh, critical, um, both of these products will help customers uh, improve yield, reduce process excursions, and uh, and ultimately uh, you know, improve their process technology going forward. Yeah, and that's the name of the game with this industry. Yeah. Okay. But there's all kinds of stuff that's going on here, and everybody's claiming that you know they're they're the ones that are going to be making the the big move. And I was just talking with the folks over at KLA Tencor about their 450 millimeter uh, tools, you know, for 450 millimeter wafers, and they're saying. You know, those things, those tools are ready now because 450 is ready to go. Um, of course, in this industry, being ready to go means you're still about five or six years out. Okay, but they're claiming that their uh, process, the 450 millimeter, will be ready before um, extreme ultraviolet. So, what do you have to say about that? Um, yeah, so I would agree with you that that um, um, 450 is well, now may, may mean a few years from now. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, our take on, on 450, I mean, it, it, there's a lot of interest from the big companies, um, uh, and you know, there's a push to these larger wafer sizes, but we, we see that coming in somewhere in the you know, 2016 to 2018 timeframe. Mm -hmm. um, we're working you know, uh, extensively on EUV light sources for the you know, EUV um, exposure tools. And you know, pilot tools are already in the field, and um, uh, you know, the next generation of those tools is going to be available starting you know later this year or early next year. Uh, and so, uh, I would expect the UV technology to be uh, in production you know, before 450 millimeter comes in. Okay, and what's that going to do to the 450 market? I mean, I I don't think they're exclusive. I think. Okay. Um, uh, I mean, the industry typically is risk averse, and so mm -hmm. I think they're reluctant to make you know, two major changes like this at the same time. So I don't think they'll they'll necessarily interested in making a switch to EUV technology and a switch to 450 wafers at the same time. So I would expect them to be sequential. So um, if EUV will, will take hold, and then once that becomes mature and stable, uh, I think those that'll, that'll migrate to 450 wafers. Okay, and. Um what about, what about the cost of all of this? I mean, there's all this talk about you know everything is slowing down now, especially in China, where a lot of this this work is being done. How is that going to affect your development and your essentially your sales? Um, well, I mean, the name of the game is I mean, I mean the reason the reason the shrink lithography is basically to reduce cost, mm -hmm. and so um, you know in the litho space. Um, the goal of moving to the next generation uh, of tool um, is to reduce your overall wafer processing cost. Mm -hmm. you know, the, the tool itself may cost more, but in terms of the number of pixels or the number of bits or the number of transistors it can produce in unit time, you know, that goes up uh, faster than the price goes up. So the overall cost per transistor or cost per bit is actually coming down. That's the whole reason why people shrink. If, if that cost doesn't come down, you know the the impetus to shrink uh, goes away. Um, so the reason why EUV is so interesting to the industry is because uh, the improvement in resolution uh, and and the capability it delivers in terms of um, you know number of transistors you can put on a wafer is just so compelling that they're prepared to pay you know the 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 higher price for those systems to get that technology. And there's there's a incredibly strong demand for EUV. It, it, you know, I got to admit that you know the technology is kind of late. Customers have wanted it for some time now, and they can't wait to get it. And they'll they'll put it in as soon as it's available. I mean, it's, it's, it, it, I've never seen you know demand so strong for technology as uh, as there is for EUV right now. 
So would you call that these advances in technology are actually uh, being driven by the slowing economy? Um, in other words, because they want to, you know, they, they want to reduce cost because yeah. people aren't buying as much. So if they reduce the cost, they'll buy more. I mean, uh, yeah, that's true. There, there is, um, you know, volume, volume versus price. Yes, uh, as um, as price of these you know, consumer products comes down, the market expands. You know, um, you know, especially in developing countries. So, yes, if we can get the cost down of the devices and the cost down of the components, such as the chips, then the market will expand, and, and uh, you know, everyone will, uh, you know, the, the whole economy will expand. So you, you got to spend money so to make money. Yeah, it's 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 definitely a contributor. Okay. Thank you.